Hey Weather Warriors, in this video we're talking about a powerful storm system brewing here in the southwestern United States. I'm forecasting this thing to sweep across the eastern half of the United States, bringing a chance of a severe weather and tornado outbreak and a potential winter storm here in the northern United States as we head towards Sunday. So all kinds of activity. That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. But before we begin, if you like detailed forecast breakdowns, educational ones, long range, click that subscribe button below. And uh, we also have a contest. How many raindrops fall in a year in a square yard for someone that receives 30 inches of rain per year? So how many raindrops? Cl uh, comment below. I'm going to pick one winner and I'm going to shout them out in the next video. All right, so let's just get right into it here. We've got a powerful cutoff low. This is near and below the jet stream at 500 millibars. Now watch as this thing moves to the east as we head towards Sunday. It starts to merge with the main jet stream off to the north and you can see this this energy here now is getting sucked into it. We got a little trough now developing. This is Sunday morning, early in the morning. And you can see all of this flow out ahead of it. This flow is going to continue to build into this jet streak here and increase, particularly when it moves towards central Texas and in, into the east. This is going to increase the severe weather potential for places near Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and even the Carolinas, maybe even Tennessee and Arkansas as well. And then we also have a winter storm that's going to happen to the north. Now, watch as we head towards eight, around uh, 1 to 7 p.m. on Sunday. You can see this jet stream really explodes, this jet streak, as we call it. And this uh, really explodes as we head towards Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Georgia area. And near and south of that, that's where your uh, best bet for severe weather is going to be. Now, as we track this to the east, this sweeps into the Carolinas, and eventually the jet stream becomes a lot more broad, and it's mainly a cold front as it moves off the shore. But we're going to really look at the severe weather threat, then we'll look at the, uh, the winter storm threat after that. What we're going to look at is the dew points. We're going to track where these fronts and the severe weather is actually going to occur, Saturday, obviously, we have a chance here in the plains. I don't think the moisture is going to get that far north, but maybe perhaps for Texas, I think your best bet for severe weather is going to be in that area, particularly where you see the 60s and 70s dews, which is uh, pretty impressive for this time of year. You can see the 60s dews right up all the way up to Kansas. Again, I think that's a little bit overdone on the GFS. I think it's going to mostly stay into Texas, but that's going to give Texas an area of severe weather. Here's your low pressure system. Probably a little bit of a dry line here. Your best bet's going to be near and ahead of that in that moist sector towards east half of Texas. Now, as we head towards Sunday, now watch what happens. This moves to the east. This is Sunday at, at uh, around 1 p.m. Here's your low pressure system right here. It's going to be a cold front kind of out in this region right here towards uh, parts of central Mississippi into Louisiana. And really out ahead of this thing, there's a nice pool of moisture. So we've had a couple of days where there's moisture coming out of the Gulf and it's just going to pool here in the southeastern United States and near and ahead of that front. And you see your warm front kind of right here. It's hanging out right around there where you see those dew points drop off really quickly. You go up from about the 40s up here to the 60s and 70s, just below Tennessee, south of Tennessee. And that's where your warm front's going to hang out. And your best bet for severe weather is going to be right where those two intersect and just to the south of that area and especially along the cold front that's typically where your storms occur so it's kind of going to be within this region right here around 1 p.m so louisiana mississippi maybe even parts of alabama that's where your best bet for severe weather is going to occur that's around 1 p.m when i think storms are going to refire as we head towards sunday evening into sunday night this low pressure system moves to the east. You still have a little bit of a cold, uh, a decent cold front here. And out ahead of that, there's still pretty good south winds blowing up uh, Gulf and Atlantic moisture into the Carolinas. I don't know that the instability is going to be all that strong for the Carolinas, but there's going to be good wind shear and enough moisture to spark off at least thunderstorms, maybe even some isolated severe thunderstorms, and maybe even an isolated tornado or two within that region as we head towards Sunday night. And then you can see that tracks into the Atlantic. Now, 
One thing we look at is instability. Instability measures the buoyancy in the atmosphere. And as we go towards Saturday here, you can see the GFS is actually pretty uh, impressive here. All you really need is about 750 for severe weather when you got that much wind shear. We got 50, 60, 70, 80 knots of wind shear. But really, uh, I think this is overdone for parts of Kansas and Oklahoma on Saturday. But certainly Texas could be seeing some uh, severe weather. And then as you track this into parts of, let's do this. We'll look at the uh, instability and wind shear crossover. So these are overlaps of the shear and instability. You can see that the red line here is the surface and the black one is going to be at 500 millibars. When you get like a 50 knot, 60 knot difference, that's really impressive. And you can see you get that right there. It's 10 knots and 70 knots. So there's about 60 knots or so between those two, probably about you know 50 to 70 knots of bulk shear overlaid about 1500 Cape for parts of Texas. So, and you got Southeast winds and then Southwest winds at the 500 millibar range. So that's a lot of directional spin in the atmosphere. Could be some tornadoes and supercells tail, especially for parts of Texas on Saturday. But as we track this into Sunday, as we head towards 1 p.m. on Sunday, you can see that instability, pretty impressive here, 2,000, maybe even more Cape within parts of uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. The uh, directional shear, not as strong, but really the speed shear, the 50 to 70, 80 knots is a huge speed shear difference. And so lots of bulk shear within this area, overlaid instability. I still think that's quite enough even though there's not a lot of directional shear for hail and tornadoes for parts of uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, and maybe even Alabama, especially early on as we head towards Sunday within this region. I think you're going to see a big tornado threat early on. As we head towards uh, Sunday night, you can see that instability drops off significantly as it moves towards Georgia and the Carolinas, but still a little bit of instability. Uh, so I think uh, some severe weather is possible within this region. But look at the wind shear. You got wind shear uh you got 500 millibar winds coming out at almost darn near 100 miles an hour which is extreme then you got surface winds at the southeast at potentially 20 to 30 miles an hour so very impressive wind shear here some of the best you'll see in the carolinas but there's not a whole lot of instability however that wind shear might compensate and what i would suspect you would see is a nice squall line or quasi linear so you get a squall line maybe some isolated supercells kind of mixed in with it and potentially some severe weather within that region even though those not textbook instability maybe a couple of strong damaging wind gusts and uh, isolated tornadoes within the carolinas as we head towards uh sunday night into monday morning and maybe even down to florida as well let's compare this with the other two models so I'm going to go back and we're going to look at uh, 90 hours here, or excuse me, we're going to look at uh, around Sunday. And what I'm going to do is we're going to look at Sunday at 1 p.m. Here's the low pressure system. It's hanging around Mississippi, northern, north central Mississippi, or cold fronts kind of hanging out down there. Now look at the difference between that and the European computer model at the same time. You can see the uh, low on the European is all the way out here in Oklahoma. And the front is extending down here in uh, eastern parts of Texas. So that would put Louisiana, eastern Texas, Arkansas, and parts of Mississippi under the gun. So it's a good uh, 100 so miles to the northwest. If you look at the GF, or if you look at the NAM computer model, the NAM's also kind of farther to the uh, west. You can see the low pressure system is in Texas with the main severe weather threat and cold front in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Now, in my experience, with these types of events, particularly in the uh, really east or west of Mississippi, it seems that the, the models have been tracking farther and farther west with events like this. There's a westward trend, so I would suspect that something like the NAM here would be a little more accurate, even though the GFS has the main show here, in parts of Mississippi, Alabama, uh, what I think is going to happen is your main show is going to be a little bit farther to the west and look more like the NAM, maybe a little bit farther northwest than the NAM. 
and uh, really put areas towards Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, and parts of eastern Texas under the gun on Sunday afternoon. So I think this is going to end up just a little bit farther to the west, uh, much like what the NAM says. So that's that, and then it would track, obviously, to the east and give parts of uh, Alabama, Georgia, and even the Carolinas storms, but it would be later on after dark overnight and mostly be a wind threat potentially some damaging winds and a couple of embedded isolated tornadoes so that's going to be the threat again the main threat would be i would say somewhere towards north central to through south central louisiana really all of louisiana to west central mississippi into east central texas that's where your main threat's going to be and we're looking at all hazards within that region, large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. And if we uh, check out some of the soundings here for that region, you're going to see some pretty impressive uh, values here. This will load. And we'll check out something else real quick. I'm going to show you the low-level jet. The soundings have actually indicated particularly dangerous situation tornadoes, which uh, essentially means... PDS tornadoes. Now, that is a really good indicator of severe weather, potentially severe uh, severe tornadoes. And if you look at the low-level jet, we'll go down to 850 here. The low-level jet is absolutely insane. I mean, you got values at 50 to 70 knots. Okay, this is near and just above the surface. Normally, you need about 25 to 30 miles an hour or so, but we've got double that. So, it is blasting across just off the surface within this region in the southeastern United States. So very impressive low-level jet. We're going to try to find one of those PDS soundings I was talking about. This is at 1 p.m. down in Mississippi. Not really seeing it there, but there definitely has been. I definitely saw some before this episode. And uh, that's a, a really good indicator of uh, severe weather. Now, if we go to the north, we're going to look at the snowstorm off to the north. And we're going to track this hour by hour here. This is going to be the GFS computer model. I think what I'm going to do is look at the, uh, the European computer model. And uh, we're going to look at this uh, storm system evolve. Now, I think the European's a little bit overdone with the snow, but we're going to take a look at it. This is uh, Sunday morning, and you can see Sunday morning, you get your low pressure system kind of to get going here in parts of uh, Oklahoma. Nice little front out ahead of it. There is a lot of precipitation out ahead of this Sunday morning. That's going to be a big question mark. If there's too many, too much precipitation ongoing in the southeastern United States and it doesn't clear in time, the sunlight won't come out and you won't get that uh, temperature gradient in the vertical of the atmosphere. So it'll be cooler at the surface and cool aloft so there won't be a big temperature gradient. When it's hot at the surface and cold aloft, that warm air rises and gives you more buoyancy. So uh, that is going to be something we really are going to want to watch. That's why I'm not saying uh, for sure that there's going to be an outbreak here. It's something we want to watch, but the most likely area is going to be a little bit farther south, I think, in towards Louisiana. But you can see these storms really get going as we head towards Sunday afternoon around 1 p.m. And behind it, we got some snow, a nice band of snow in Iowa, Nebraska, parts of Colorado, the Dakotas, up into Minnesota. And we're talking pretty heavy snowfall rates, according to the European computer model. This is Sunday night now, and you can see uh, Sunday night around 1 a.m. Very impressive, complex line of storms. When you get a big widespread look like this, the tornado threat begins to lower, but you can see damaging winds for sure with these types of squall lines as we head towards Alabama, parts of Georgia into the Carolinas, widespread rain and embedded thunderstorms in the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic region and the Northeast, and also some snow in Iowa and Wisconsin into Canada. As we head towards uh, parts of, uh, as we head towards Monday morning here, this thing really gets going. 979 millibar low, very powerful storm system. Very strong cold front now in the east half of the United States. That squall line moves to the east. Meanwhile, thunderstorms and rain building into the northeastern United States. Lots of rain in Canada and heavy snow in parts of the upper Midwest and Canada. So pretty impressive by the European computer model here on Monday. And that begins to weaken but spreads out as we head towards 
uh, Monday night into Tuesday. Now, how much snowfall are we looking at and how much rain are we looking at? Well, let's look at the snowfall first. This is the European computer model. It's putting a big dumping of snow for the Midwest, North Central United States, the Plains. You're talking a good at four to as much, you know, as you get towards Canada here, 12 to 18 inches in Canada and about a good three to as much as 10 inches here within the Rockies, the Northern Plains, the Central Plains into parts of Wisconsin. I think this is overdone. I would suspect that in the Northern Plains, Central Plains here, you would see those amounts cut in half. There's some indication there'll be a little bit drier air up here, and sometimes those severe storms do uh, undercut some of the moisture. I would suspect this area would be cut in half, and you would see a little band here in the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, parts of Iowa, and Wisconsin to see maybe two to four inches, maybe an isolated six inch amount within this region. But Canada, for sure, it's looking like a decent snowstorm up there with potentially six plus inches in some locations and then the Rockies obviously we'll see a good fresh coating of six plus inches of snow and then we're gonna look at those moisture the surface and precipitation and uh, you know you're talking a good dumping of, of rain as we get towards Tuesday through Tuesday here and you can see across eastern parts of the United States two to as much as four inches in some areas but a good widespread one plus inch from this system that tracks into the east half of the United States. Obviously, in the northern parts of the United States, up to an inch of liquid precipitation. So with that said, click that subscribe button below. That's going to wrap it up. We'll have more updates. We'll probably go live as well for the severe weather outbreak that occurs this weekend. And uh, click the subscribe button below. That Share this with a friend. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.